Hey guys, welcome back to Pop'em Up Cam, and we are getting stuck into acids and bases again. And we're doing acid deposition. As always, if you could comment, share, like, subscribe, all the bells and whistles, and check out our other channels, links, and all that jazz will be in the description. Let's get on with today. So, today we are going to level up your understanding of acid rain and take it from basic cursory understanding to a more chemical understanding little refresh which is mainly just a recall kind of question just to get us started and warmed up which of these are weak acids pause it to give yourself some time okay hopefully you know that hcl nitric acid and sulfuric acid are all strong acids and so therefore your other two are going to be weak acids. Okay, so what's acid deposition anyway? Basically, it's a more general term than acid rain, and it covers all acidic things that can deposit from the atmosphere onto the surface of the earth. So this can be wet or dry in the form of acidic gases and particles. The main culprits of this are the non-metal oxides, that's your carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, etc. And that's actually what makes rain naturally acidic because carbon dioxide, so the oxide of carbon, when it is dissolved in water can react with water to form carbonic acid. And this is a natural form of acidification. And so when we're discussing acid deposition, we tend to think of things outside of the range that can be formed naturally. So carbonic acid can cause water to go down to about 5.6 and 7 between there and so anything in that range we don't consider to be acid rain because the co2 from the atmosphere can dissolve in the water and from the same equation from the slide before we can form carbonic acid so in that range 5.6 to 7 we don't consider that acid rain as such even though it is acidic now what we do consider acid rain or acidified systems is where we go below 5.6 and the reason for that is the when sulfur and nitrogen oxides that's sulfuric or sulfurous acid and nitric acid get involved we can end up with systems that go below this and the reason we count this is these are anthropogenic processes that means that they're only produced by human activities and this is why we consider that acid rain because without humans, these processes would not be happening. So let's have a look at where these things are coming from, starting with sulfur. So sulfur dioxide is formed from the burning of fuels that contain sulfur. So this could be coal or most fossil fuels contain at least trace amounts of sulfur and we form SO2 gas. Now this SO2 gas can become sulfur trioxide if it's further reacted with oxygen in an oxygen rich atmosphere like the atmosphere and that then forms the sulfur trioxide now this sulfur trioxide can react with water that is either in the air or in ground sources and can form h2so4 aka sulfuric acid so as we know sulfuric acid is a strong acid and so therefore can bring the ph much below 5.6 so2 can also directly dissolve in water uh, to form sulfurous acid which is a lower oxidation state acid and not as strong but even without that further step into forming sulfur trioxide we're still forming sulfurous acid and nitrogen oxides formed from nitrogen and oxygen to form NO or NOx and these compounds require very high temperatures and pressures to form. Internal combustion engines are a perfect storm for this because we have a combustion chamber where we are driving air and fuel into a chamber and then we are igniting that fuel and what that fuel does is it's in as we put the fuel and air in, both the valves close, the inlet and outlet valves close and force the piston. So there's nowhere for that fuel air mixture to go once it's ignited and expand. And that's what we want. We want that expansion to drive 
the piston and then that's what gives us torque and, and power that's one of the places where we produce the most NO gases that NO gas can further be oxidized again the process is complicated but basically we end up with NO2 gas and then this can form nitric acid and it can happen in a couple of ways either through hydroxy radical and form HNO3 which is nitric acid or we can have the reaction of the NO2 gas oxygen and water again oxygen and water being very plentiful in the environment to form nitric acid okay question time first question then sample of water is taken from a lake explain why a pH of 6.2 is not considered acidic pause the video here to give yourself some time pop them up if you said something like CO2 accounts for all pH above 5.6 or between 5.6 and 7 you're correct next then oxides of which two elements cause acid rain pause the video here to give yourself some time pop them up it is of course nitrogen and sulfur next question then write equations to show how sulfur dioxide can form acid rain here exams would accept either to form sulfurous or sulfuric pause the video to give yourself some time pop them up as i said with this one you could have taken the sulfuric route or the sulfurous route just make sure if it specifies in an exam question you pick the right one ah who cares i hear you ask combustion engines are awesome a bit of acid rain never hurt anyone well actually it did and we're going to look at the four main problems associated with acid deposition they damage buildings yeah that's right humans make that so it matters lakes streams and forests i mean yeah that's nature so it doesn't really matter too much but god forbid the last one it damages people so better pay attention guys firstly let's have a look at building damage lovely lovely buildings so limestone is a really common building material limestone main thing it's made out of is calcium carbonate react that with h2so4 and that's a classic acid base reaction you already know about that the problem is it's dissolving the buildings so it doesn't just stop at buildings though we also have a lot of damage to lakes and streams basically low ph stops larvae fish invertebrates from being able to survive and also aluminium ions that are released uh, from rocks are very damaging to fish gills and can cause you know kind of mass death in uh, lake and stream systems which is obviously bad this effect can also be exacerbated in the spring when the sun kind of melts uh, snow and you get water start running and ecosystems can have a huge flush of aluminium ions and dissolved minerals that were not part of the ecosystem before as the melt from higher ground rushes through um, so you have the sustained effect of this and you also have the effect over the short term even trees can't hack it so aluminium ions also wreak havoc with trees being able to take up water stunt their growth thinning and yellowing the leaves and it can also cause other nutrient deficiencies in trees and if that wasn't enough it also affects humans that's right something that matters so we already said that sulfur dioxide can and nitrogen oxide can react with water to form sulfuric sulfurous and nitric acid well in the little tiny alveoli sacs in your lungs as you're breathing in this air with these oxides in these oxides can react with the water in the mucosal membrane in these sacs and form this acid in your lungs which sucks for your lungs obviously okay it's time to test you out again okay give a balanced chemical equation that shows how acid rain can damage buildings pause the video here to give yourself a bit of time for that pop them up 
So as long as you showed either sulfuric or nitric acid reacting with a carbonate, you would have got marks in an exam for this. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how do I stop this? Well, other people have thought the same thing too. And there is quite a th few things we can do to deal with acid deposition. Some of them kind of deal with the outcomes. Some of them try and address them before. And we're going to look specifically at SO2 emissions and how they can be reduced. So we can kind of split that into two categories. We have kind of reducing SO2 emissions by pre-combustion methods and by post-combustion methods. So pre-combustion methods uh, include hydrogen sulfonation, which basically means we heat the crude oil in the presence of hydrogen and a catalyst and remove hydrogen sulfide. This can then be reacted with an alkaline solution to give us sulfur and that can be sold to other companies or not as the case may be but at least we've removed the sulfur from the fuel before it goes out to sale now post combustion methods this is more common in like coal fired power plants where there's a lot of flue gases coming out and actually removing sulfur from coal is nigh on impossible bef before the fact and what happens is the flue gas that is let out into the atmosphere is passed over lots of these carbonates and in an effort to reduce as much of the sulfur content leaving the power station. So to explore this in the real world, I wanted to do a little kind of mini project on this and look at what is happening with acid deposition in a global pandemic. So here I've got a statement. The incidence of acid deposition will increase in a global pandemic. Do you agree with the statement? yes or no basically but here i've also outlined the criteria of what i think would make a good argument a bad argument and how you should be justifying at each step and developing a nuanced and balanced argument for each basically you need to look at how human activity is changed in this global pandemic and how that will affect the different processes that may influence acid deposition and whether you think they will increase or decrease over this time and whether you agree with the statement. Summarizing that then, when you're done with that, make sure you do some questions to make sure you really understand what's going on and try and remember that we're not including carbon dioxide in this and pHs up between 5.6 and 7 are not considered acid rain. Thanks for watching. As always, comment below, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, share the channel, and check out the videos on our other channels. As always, practice makes slightly better.